This video is brought to you by Mint Mobile. So I've been using the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra for a little more than six months now. And so I believe I do have a pretty good idea of what this device is like to use as your daily driver. And so if I were to summarize everything that I wanna talk about this device, it would come down to this. It's probably one of the most complete devices I've used this year. Honestly, great phone from Samsung. I don't know how they did it because I've used a couple more generations before this and there were always some small problems that I had with the phone. However, with the S24 Ultra, I believe they made a phone that is complete. But again, if that is all I said, you wouldn't wanna watch this video. So I am gonna go a little deeper and actually explain those things and give you guys my perspective about this device. So let's go ahead and begin. I do wanna start off with one of my favorite things about this device and that has to be the screen. So the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra has a beautiful display. It does have a peak brightness of 2000 nits. That isn't the brightest. I know somebody might say there's a phone that's brighter. However, this phone has one slight advantage and that has got to be the new anti-glare technology they use on their display. So basically what this does is what the name says, it's anti-glare and it reduces glare by a lot. For example, in some of my videos when I'm comparing these devices, I'm not sure if you watch those, but if you do, you can probably tell that the display of the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra does not shine as bright or it does not reflect the light that's above hitting the phones as much as the other devices, which honestly has helped me out so much. In outdoor conditions, this has been a great feature. The sun hits the display, even though it's at its peak brightness, that extra anti-glare just helps it out so much more. I can compare it to my iPhone 15 Pro, which can also get up to 2000 nits of brightness. However, when comparing both side by side, the S24 Ultra just wins by a lot. And once again, that is because of the anti-glare technology. I do hope that a lot of other companies actually implement this as well. I think it's a great feature, and I do believe that other companies need to be inspired by other innovative tech. Other than that, this display is very vibrant. The blacks are black, the colors are very beautiful, they look really nice, the reds are red, the yellows are yellow, the blues are blue, and it just pops. It's really nice. They did tone it down compared to previous generations of their S series, but again, it's still a very beautiful display, and day-to-day -day content, watching YouTube videos, watching Netflix on this device has just been a blast. Moving on from the display, I do actually wanna talk about the battery. The battery has been great on this device. It has a 5,000 milliamp hour battery, which is similar to previous generations, However, I don't know what they've done. I think it might be because of the new efficient chipset or them just optimizing it better. The battery life just lasts a lot longer. They've been doing this every year. Their battery has been improving every year, but with the S24 Ultra, I think it's just the perfect device. The battery on this device has given me no issues and it's just gone through everything like a beast. With this device, there have been many days where I've gone to bed, I forgot to charge it, and by many days, I mean probably like 80% of my days, where I just forget to plug it in overnight, I just put my phone down and I wake up, I have like 20%, 30%, and it's never been an issue for me. With When I use this phone, that has never bothered me at all. I've never stressed out about it, I've never said, oh, I need to charge my phone, I need to get some battery, I need to get some juice in there, but with this device, None of that has happened, which is honestly just great. All I have to do is either just plug it in when I'm getting ready. It does support 45 watts of fast wireless charging, which isn't the fastest I know. However, it does get most of your job done. Or when I'm just going into the car, traveling or commuting to where I need to go, I just plug it in the car, get a couple more percent, and it just boosts me through the day. So honestly, it's just been a great device. The battery lasts me the whole day, or even sometimes it lasts me more than a whole day, which honestly has been great. As I said, the only downside might be the charging. You know, if you got some faster wireless charging or even faster wire charging, it would be great, you know, top it up a little faster, but the 45 watts of fast charging has honestly been great so far. Even the performance of this device has been great. I don't know what they've done. Is it the Snapdragon HN3 or if they optimized it just a whole bunch more, but this device has performed very well. Even day-to-day -day tasks, closing apps, opening apps, just going on social media, scrolling through social media, watching YouTube videos, everything is just a breeze. I don't see any glitches, you know, there's no animation bugs. Everything is just super optimized. And this is probably the most optimized device that I've used from Samsung. This is the device where I said, I love this device and I will use this more than any of my devices. And that is basically what happened. I only switched to my iPhone for a couple of months but this has been my daily driver even when I was using my iPhone. Other than those daily tasks, even doing graphics intensive things like playing games, maybe hopping on some Genshin Impact, playing some other more graphic intensive games, this device has no issue. It just performs really nice and I've had no issues with it. No thermal throttling, everything has been great unless you push it really hard, you know, get like three, four hours of gaming, which I don't think anyone would really do. Other than that, as for the daily user, this phone 
performs really well. I do think one of the main reasons other than maybe the chipset has to come down to the optimization of this device. They've optimized this phone a lot. Before, as you guys know, Samsung used to just overload a whole bunch of features. It would just haul in a whole bunch of features that would be great. However, they weren't really optimized. So everything just not being completely optimized really messed with the software. And so Samsung has taken a step back. They're looking more into optimizing their devices instead of just overhauling it with features. And I am a fan of that. You know, it was really nice to have those cool little features. However, I do think they need a more refined software to actually pull in more people with their devices. Because if your device isn't really optimized and you struggle or just have those little issues with daily tasks, I don't think anyone would like to use a phone like that, especially since this is the phone you carry in your pocket and you use for most of your tasks. And so I do think the approach that Samsung is taking with their devices is more important for me. I do want a more optimized device rather than having a overhaul of features. But to be able to use your phone to its full, you are gonna be needing a strong and reliable wireless connection. And that is where Mint Mobile comes in. Having a stable connection allows you to stream videos on your mobile devices on the go without having any issues. A stable connection allows for you to be able to speed up every task that you do where you have to use Wi-Fi. And so having that stable connection will just make everything more efficient. Switching to Mint is actually super easy, especially with the addition of eSIM now, only taking around 15 minutes to actually complete the whole process. Being on Mint means that you're gonna be saving money without actually losing out on any features that you might've gotten with those bigger carriers. Mint has a very intuitive app to manage and control your account, which allows for a better user experience and making everything easier in the process. With the already cost-effective prices, if you do go ahead and use the link in the description, you will go ahead and get 50% off your first three months of Mint's unlimited plan. Now back to the phone. So I do wanna talk a little about the design of this device. I really love the build of the S24 Ultra. Honestly, this boxy design has been super nice. However, there are a couple of drawbacks which I will get to. First of all, with the boxy design, I do think the screen just looks really nice and the square design of the screen or the rectangular design of the screen honestly just fits every type of content, social media content, scrolling through your reels, scrolling through TikTok, watching YouTube videos, watching Netflix, whatever you do, I do think that that boxy screen is just the perfect design for every type of content. With the S24 Ultra, we also did get a small design change, which is gonna be the curved display. This year, we do have a flat display. I did like the look of the curved display. However, it just was a little pain when you had those accidental touches or it just cracking a lot easier because of those curves. But this year with the flat display, they went ahead and got rid of all of those problems. Again, going back to the boxy design, I do think it looks very premium, it looks really nice. However, the one big issue I have about it is gonna be the edges. So because we do have very straight edges, they do actually go ahead and poke into your hand or poke into your palm, and it does get annoying after a while, especially when I'm laying down or watching something while laying down, it just pokes in so much that it does get annoying and I kind of have to just rest my hand on something to support the device. I do think this might change depending on your hand size as well. I do have some pretty medium hands, but again, it's still annoying. It still bulges into your hand, and so I do think a lot of people find it annoying. However, I did hear that the S25 Ultra might get some rounded edges. I don't know if I'm happy about it or sad about it, but the boxy design looks really good. It doesn't feel the best. The rounded edges, it doesn't look as premium as the boxy design, but they will feel better. So it's a hit or miss. You just have to choose which one you like more. To finish it up, I do wanna talk about the cameras. So we have a multitude of cameras on this. You get tons of different angles which you can use with the cameras. And so honestly, it's a very versatile camera. You can use it for many different types of shots, zoomed in shots or just wide angle shots, any type of shot up until 100X, which is super nice. And with those extra lenses on 3X or 5X, you don't lose out on quality because it's not a digital zoom. I do think that they improve the photos a lot. And honestly, it has been a great device to take photos. One of the greatest things that I think they did is reduce the shutter speed. That was one of the biggest issues with this phone. And that was one of the biggest issues that I had with previous generations of the S series. Honestly, the shutter speed was really bad, especially compared to iPhones, the shutter speed was honestly really bad. And so you would miss out on a lot of shots. Maybe you have to pull out your phone, you have to take a quick photo. The iPhone would just do it better. But with the S24 Ultra, they actually got rid of that and they fixed it completely. Now, moving on to the videos, I do think they're still really good. However, I'm not sure if they're as good as my iPhone 15 Pro. I do think the 15 Pro does take videos a little better than my S24 Ultra. The S24 Ultra does have some grain that does depend on lighting situations, but when comparing both side by side, I do see that the S24 Ultra does struggle a little more with low light situations, especially in dark areas. The videos on the S24 Ultra are a little more grainy compared to my 15 Pro, but they actually have improved that as well because previously, 
the videos were really bad during night times. So as I said in the beginning of the video, other than some very minor things, I do think the S24 Ultra is Samsung's most complete device. I do believe Samsung nailed it with this one. Honestly, everything is super optimized and I do think that Samsung needs to continue this route. You know, the minor upgrades do get a little annoying sometimes. However, I do think before implementing very major changes, they should actually optimize their device just like they did with the S24 Ultra. So other than that, I can't really say anything else. I just can't wait for the next generations of this phone. I hope Samsung continues this route and they make great devices like this. But again, that is gonna wrap it up for this device. Again, this is a really good phone. Well, that'll be it for now. And so if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe and see y'all in the next one.